New York City Police Department's Commissioner Dermot Shea defended the use of force by his officers during the protests surrounding the death of George Floyd. The video of two police cruisers trying to run down protests went viral. The video shows one police cruiser lined up against a, a metal fence of sorts uh, as protesters were trying to get them to pull back. The second cruiser arrives and directly runs into protesters, which then prompts the first cruiser to do the same. But according to the NYPD commissioner, sweet little Dermot, right, the police cruiser was not used as force. And the NYPD also proved that they are not a use of a human brain. Now, Commissioner Dermott says that the officers were fearing for their lives. You know, Dermott points out how these mean protesters were throwing things like water bottles and even bags of garbage at the police officers. I mean, what were they supposed to do with their souped up police car and their body armor? Some of these water bottles were gently lobbed in the air like a novice tennis player. But this is a defense that's used by many police departments to justify firing projectiles at the speed of sound directly into the eyes of protesters and also children. And there is some logic to this, right? Because children are the future, which means that in the future, they could become protesters and henceforth, they're preventing crime before it even happened. I mean, that is... That is Nobel Peace Prize worthy right there, you know. And the Portland police went on Twitter to show that the protesters were throwing things like apples and white claws. Look, if the cops are afraid of produce and white girl drinks, then it really is time to 100% defund the police and replace it with something vastly different and get these cops into PTSD therapy so they can visit a grocery store without murdering an elderly woman picking out a ripe Fuji. Now, Commissioner Dermott claimed that these officers didn't have anywhere to go. They were trapped by these protesters calling out the cops for being murderous villains. So they had to, you know, become murderous villains. There's a very simple way to call bullshit on this whole thing, right? As I mentioned just a little bit ago, there was a second cruiser that drove up from behind the first one. I mean, why not just back up and then leave the situation that way? The NYPD basically used horror movie logic to, to escape what they claimed was a dangerous situation. Now, I suppose that they can claim that they had to use force because these protesters were resisting arrest. And these people are so devious that they didn't even know they were being arrested. I mean, that is, that is next level supervillainy is what that is. New York Attorney General Lolita James asked Dermot if he was familiar with this incident, to which Dermot responded that he's intimately familiar with that incident, probably because when he goes home, the only thing that he can think of to get hard is brutalizing protesters. Now, Lolita James goes on to ask if these cops were, were in violation of the NYPD's use of uh, use of force policy and if the car was an appropriate use of force. And Dermot denied the fact that force was even being used in that situation. I mean, you know, he might as well have come out and been like, what force? Did you see any force? I mean, the only force I see is from that gay Star Wars movie. Suck my dick, NYPD for life, eat my balls, Dermot out, right? Dermot also claimed that 300 officers were injured in the protest, but the question that's not being asked is how many people have been illegally murdered, attacked, and injured by the police since just Memorial Day when George Floyd was killed? I bet, I bet it's a little more than 300. 
And in this and and the same defenses that cops use to justify attempted vehicular manslaughter and also regular manslaughter doesn't really hold up for we the people when we get our day in court, if we get our day in court. I mean, I'm a comedian that has been threatened to be killed while performing a few times over my career. And in any of those instances, if I had jumped off stage and choked out a racist with my microphone cord and then justified my actions by saying I was scared, I'd still go to prison. Now Dermot also said how sad it is that no one is coming to defend the cops. And the cops are nervous because people might you know, like yell at them and stuff. Obviously, Dermot hasn't talked to a cop lately because most of the interactions that the cops have with the people are either screaming at them, trying to murder them, or trying to financially ruin them. Now, Dermot claims only about 10 cops have had to be disciplined by the NYPD for their behavior in the protests. I mean, basically, he's saying that using a cruiser to attack protesters, shoving protesters, illegally choking out their victims, attacking bicyclists crossing the street is all fair game for the NYPD. I mean, look, they are just following the rules like the Nazi soldiers did. And if they don't beat bicyclists, then I mean, those people could become healthy. And, and being healthy leads to more apples, which we know is the only thing that can kill a cop, okay? It's eat an apple a day and then a police officer explodes in the middle of the street, destroying law and order all throughout America. And that was just because of an apple. That's why they used a rotten apple excuse. That's how much cops hate apples. They fucking hate apples. So they gotta destroy all the apples in America to save America and they have to beat bicyclists so that they don't eat apples. Look, Dermot and the NYPD police union president wants cops to be respected because their badges aren't stained, but they're just blinded to the grime and scum covering their badges. You know, the grime and scum have become the shine, especially when you justify brutality and gaslight the American people over fictional tales of fear or cops being trapped by protesters. I mean, these these guys are basically the prime example of why we need a new system of policing and justice. When you employ paranoid, hypermasculine psychopaths to enforce law and order, Law and order becomes psychopathy that finds pleasure from its brutality. We are moving forward, chugging along with the uh, live virtual stand-up comedy shows called The Citizen Revolution. Uh, Each week I cover a brand new topic and each week it's brand new material and each week we are supporting a new grassroots organization venue activist or journalist. Uh, This week, June 26th, we're going to be talking about general strikes. We're going to be talking about the history of general strikes, why they work, and what they mean for the American people. So grab your tickets right now to come check out that show on June 26th. Go to the description of this episode, hit that, click that ticket link, and grab a ticket right now. It's only five bucks. Five bucks. It's a five dollar minimum, and that gets you into the. It, it, it confirms your ticket, and that way you'll be in uh, in line to get uh, all the login info to enter the virtual theater to check out the Citizen Revolution. Uh, and this week we are going to be donating fifty percent of our ticket sales as we normally do uh, to a venue on the thirty fifth. Venue on thirty fifth. Uh, they are an amazing grassroots DIY black box theater in uh, Norfolk, Virginia, that helps people uh, discover uh, the, the the maximum potential of their art. They pretty much give people a space to to work out what they need to work out, figure out what what their art is all about, figure out what their what what, what their craft is really about, and give them a space to experiment and grow as artists. They're they're amazing, amazing space. I was there in January to perform. Uh, my show, uh, Politely Angry, 
And uh, it was an amazing, amazing show. We had about uh, 20, 30 people in that room and it was really packed in. I mean, it's an intimate, intimate space. So, uh, and right now, you know, due to the pandemic, they are, uh, they are a venue uh, that is affected by the pandemic. And I wanna do my part by giving back to a venue that is given uh, to me. So um, that's part of the reason why we're donating to them. Uh, they're an awesome part of the Norfolk community. So uh, June 26th, if you're listening on the day of the show, uh, if not, there are plenty of other chances to catch the Citizen Revolution live virtual stand-up comedy show. Uh, we got July 10th, July 17th, August 7th, August 14th, and August 28th. Uh, and they'll probably be going into the fall as well. Um, on top of the Citizen Revolution live virtual comedy show, Citizen Revolutions are also going to be in the in, in a couple different Fringe festivals. In July, it's going to be in the Fringe PVD, uh, uh, Providence, Rhode Island's Fringe Festival, uh, Ju Ju July 30th and July 31st at 6 p.m. I'll be performing the Citizen Revolution show. Uh, so uh, make sure you grab tickets for that. Uh, those are uh, the, the the fringe festivals are all donation based, and once again, half of that is going to be donated to a grassroots a grassroots cause as well. Other ways that you can help me out and help out this show, uh, because I am currently still making a living uh, off of donations and ticket sales off these shows as well, because I am grounded from being on tour, which is normally how I uh, earn a living. Uh, you can become a patron. You can become a sustaining member. Uh, or make a one-time donation right on my website at krishmohan.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N. Uh, there are some of you that have already become sustaining members. There are some of you that have made a bunch of donations, and every little bit helps you guys. And I really, really appreciate it. You guys are fucking awesome and rock stars uh, for, for, for being sustaining members and grabbing tickets to come out to these shows. You guys are superstars. So um, thank you so much to the people that already have and to the people that would like to, that is a way that you can help shows like this grow um, and uh, increase the quality and quantity of these shows. Uh, so you can become a sustaining member over on Patreon, directly on my website and on my Bandcamp. This gets you free tickets to come out to see those live virtual stand-up comedy shows. Uh, it gets you exclusive unreleased stand-up comedy material and it gets you uh, a bunch of other free swag as well, including early access to some videos that you get to, that you get to see before anybody else does. Uh, that is all available uh, uh, right off my website, krishmohan.com. And while you're there, you can also download a copy of my brand new album, Politely Angry. You can download that uh, from wherever you listen to uh, music, from from the Pandoras to the iTunes to Google Plays, whatever whatever it is, uh, and, but the place that I recommend going to is Bandcamp because they are the most artist friendly. They give the most back to artists, um, and they they also are donating a portion of their proceeds to various different causes as well. So they are they're a socially conscious uh, company. Uh, they're an artist friendly company, and I recommend you go and support your favorite artists, uh, such as myself. Uh, if, if I am your favorite artist, if I'm one of your favorites, whatever, that's cool. That's cool too. You know, whatever, uh, you, you support it through the Bandcamp page. Uh, thank you so much for tuning into to, to these, these announcements. Uh, thank you so much for tuning into, uh, this show. And, and it, you know, if you're a new listener, I hope you become a regular listener. If you're a regular listener, thank you for coming back.